Industry Invaders. You know it is your boy Cam 1111. And oh my God, we've been growing, we've been glowing, and we've been blossoming into a great community, man. I can't thank y'all enough for all the love and support. But hip hop has a sensitivity problem. Shout out Louisa. Let's check it out, man. No intro needed. Let's go. Let's go. The first thing he did was refer to him as a sensitive rapper. 100%. And first things first. That's an absolutely iconic cipher, right? And the verse on control was absolutely iconic. Shout hey, out to Kendrick. We won't be talking about someone like Aubrey Graham Let's because go. he's made that perception that he's a little soft to work for him and really owned it. Yeah, for sure. Instead, Definitely. we're going to focus on a few rappers whose sensitive nature has really been a hurdle in their career. Let's get into it then. Make sure you like, share, subscribe if you're new. And when it comes to being a little too emotionally volatile to handle the constant scrutiny that comes with being a rapper, there's no greater poster boy for that. Oh. Hey, I want to know. I want to know. How, first of all, I want to know how y'all feel about Logic. I'm going to be honest. I always thought Logic was ass. But what makes him ass is his persona, the aura. Not necessarily his skill level. But just like him, like I just always felt he was weak, and I didn't also like the message he was pushing as far as the the mixed biracial that little whole middle child shit J Cole be trying to do. I'm not a fan of that because either you with me or you against me. You can't play both sides of the fence. You cannot. And logic, when we look at you, we don't see a African descent or African American. We don't see that. That's just off your appearance. Not saying you're not that. We just saying we don't see that. So I don't really identify with you much. You know what I'm saying? Still shout out to you, bro. I never want to see you down or not successful. But, you know, from just, you know, a real fan of the culture and a studier of the culture, bro. I don't. I, we don't identify with you. It never Getting connected. A lot of never. Fanfare. When he dropped his debut album under pressure, Logic's public persona began to overshadow his considerable rhyming ability. Because in the game where right. everyone has a hard exterior, even people like Hot 97's Paul Rosenberg thought that being soft was Logic's biggest problem. I always pull um, Peter's leg about how when we when we first like sat down and did our interview, we just talked about this. How he was like, "You're too nice." And he was like, almost like I was like, "Damn!" Like I just traveled all the way over here to come meet you. Already skating on thin ice with most fans by the time he dropped his sci-fi inspired sophomore album the incredible true story it was his next album everybody where the issues that would eventually drive logic temporarily out of hip-hop really hey i got that same bomber jacket As it was here where logic became obsessed with expressing his biracial identity see so that and that's that where you that's right? where you lose not only me but you lose the culture because we don't do that it's either you with us or you're not simple as that and we get on people all the time. We get on Ye about it. We get on Candace Parker about it. We get on Diddy. I mean, anybody, if, if you trying to kick that both sides shit, we not fucking with you. Straight up. As blunt as it sounds, it's the truth. And some black people look ashamed when I rap. Like my great granddaddy didn't take a whip to the back. In my bloodline and in my lineage was the slave and the master. I'm a biracial person. Who oh my white God, dude, rap. that is just cringe. Let's take a pause for that, y'all. That's that shit's hella cringy, man. That type of shit we don't rock with. We don't rock with that, bro, as a culture. You know what I mean? That's just And in the hell ranks no. of hardcore fans, it was this moment where he really killed the steam of his It's career. over, yeah. So hey, even hey, as not. far as to create petitions to revoke Logic's N-word path. As one user on That's Logic's subreddit put it, memes about Logic being biracial killed him being taken seriously in hip-hop. Everybody and their mamas were making shitty memes about Logic being biracial at the time. People took it to an extreme, where now all of the comments are flooded but it's with true. biracial jokes, and it just sucks. From the moment he started getting trolled all the time online, Logic made it very obvious that he couldn't handle it. And in an interview with Billboard, Logic claimed that he had to reach out to his fellow light skinned rapper slash friend J. Cole to get advice on how to solve it. And y'all, y'all let me know if I'm being too hard or too critical, but I'm just being honest and I'm speaking it like bluntly as I possibly can when I come when it comes to the fact that, bro, that's just not it. And we understand that you're mixed. We understand that you uh, identify with both sides. But we can't understand you playing both sides. You get what I'm saying? If that makes sense. Like, you identifying with both sides is cool because that's who you are. That's your family, uh, mom and dad, you know. It's different cultures, different, you know. But you don't identify with us, bro. 
And we can't, that's, it doesn't connect. It doesn't, it doesn't land. It doesn't land. To not care. However, as much as he tried to move past it, Logic was incapable of celebrating his successes without focusing on the negative. As when people like Joe Budden claimed he was one of the worst rappers ever, he immediately took that, to I agree. Logic, you are easily one of the worst rappers <laughs> to ever grace a microphone. Most definitely, most definitely. I know you sell out a whole bunch of tours, and I know just how successful you are. I have to be honest. <laughs> You are horrible, man. Sure enough, in For 2020, sure. Logic bowed out of the game with no pressure. And at the time, he was open to the fact that he was basically forced out up from the emotional toll it was taking on him. Because when I go on my phone, I hit a level that's just loved or hated. And so I can literally, I mean, it happens all the time. It's like I go and I'll be like, I love you guys. And somebody's like, faggot. No. And I'm just like, you the F word. Why you just say this and nothing happens to you? While Logic has since gone back on his retirement and is now dropping music again, it looks like the time off really did him some good because by the looks of it, there are signs that he's finally at peace with simply dropping music for fun and not looking for anyone's approval. Music for you fun? Take a step back for yourself, for your mental health, for your son, for your wife. People say you fell off. Well, this is me falling off. And I love it. While well, Logic has officially taken a backseat to all the drama that comes with being a rapper, one peer of his, whose tendency to get in his own head and lose his cool actively damage his come up, mm. is Wale. Hailing from Ooh, DC, Wale. How y'all feel about Wale, though, man? I'm going to be honest. Love, love, love Wale. Skill is incredible. Skill is impeccable. Pensmanship, music street, artistry. Wale is really, really dope. Did he whiteball himself? Yeah, he did. He did whiteball himself. For the simple fact that, I mean, he had a lot of label situations too, though, y'all. And he was an artist that didn't play nice. He rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Um, you got plenty of interviews, countless of times, where he just rubbed people the wrong way with how he speak or how he spoke or how his views on, you know, he did a lot of rubbing people the wrong way. So, but if we just talking pure music, pure sales, a uh, skill level artistry music uh music uh sk skill level uh, capability uh writing while they hard while they don't killing it when he originally burst it on while they don't there was even a time where he was spoken about in the same breath as people like Kendrick and Drake and 100 percent but over time talent he just getting in his own way to the point that it's alleged that the second verse on J. Cole's song False Prophets where he talks about a rapper homie who wants to win bad is about him. Meanwhile, Kendrick, who was once close to him, basically ghosted him after he grew bitter over the success which escaped him. This is something that Wale himself chose to reveal publicly in an old tweet. Yeah. You don't that do that. Read, he didn't answer my phone since the last nomination. I get the Demi Lovato treatment from him now, but considering he is no slouch on the mic, and was no, not at all. Rick Ross's MMG and Atlantic, the only thing that killed his momentum was his overly emotional nature. One fan pointed this out on a Reddit thread that read, A dude argued with random fans, women, and he thought that he should be as big as Drake and Cole, but just wouldn't play his role. Everyone got tired of his attitude. The yeah, that's the attitude, man. Started to overshadow his music. And that's, and that's what I want to... That's important, y'all. And I don't just tell my son that, but I tell anybody that, man, you can't get nowhere with a fucked up attitude, bro. You got a really nasty attitude or a nasty view or bad energy, negative energy, man. How the fuck do you expect to be successful in whatever you're doing? There's no way you can. There's no way you think you can, right? You got to change, man. You got to look outside yourself. You have to. Like, you really, if you want to reach certain levels of, obviously, it's going to be a ceiling to the level you want to reach. Just like Kmart said, it's going to be a door you enter. You're like, wow, i never been here before. But then it's a door behind that door as well as another door. Like each level is a door, right? And then it, some requires you to do this or do that. But you won't even be able to enter any field or any game or any class or any room if you got a fucked up attitude. Who do, nobody wants to help someone with a nasty attitude. Nobody call he had with a complex writer over his album being absent from their list of best records of the year. So you think it's responsible for you know, you think y'all being a responsible publication by continuously to, to fucking like just do like all that petty shit like at this point you know it's gotta be personal. And I don't want and like you tell me it's not personal, you know it's like a bold face ride. Like to be a man from every type of list that y'all do or or be at the bottom of it or Certain that everyone and everything 
was against him. Message to Wale. Wale, this is my message to you, and I love you. Um, I understand your creative ways. You're creative. You're, you're really dope artist. Really dope musician. Incredible pensmanship. Like, you're really incredible at writing. Bro, just go independent. You have a niche fan base. And, bro, you just work your mood that way. I say fuck the label. I say uh, fuck the industry. And you just do your own thing. Um, you will never get that acclaim. You will never get that worldwide fanfare like a Drake or a Kendrick or a Cole. You will never get that. Um, but I say, bro, focus on your fans. I say focus on the people who love you. And and you ride that wave out. You know, your family, your fans, your, you know, you focus on that. Your band or your musicians that's around you, bro. You focus on that, man. I say fuck the industry. Wale just kept going at the poor guy. And even when he was told it was nothing personal, he blew his top. Threatening to come to the office. I mean, there's no disrespect, man. I mean, straight up, I really... Get off! Whoa! Wait, wait, whoa. And he has since said that this moment was a turning point for him. As even OGs such as Jay Z and Q Tip tapped in to let him know that wasn't cool. That's the very first thing Jay told me. You just got it. You just made them. The list is more important said, now than ever. Everybody, everybody brought it to me that day. Everybody brought. I'm talking about Jay Tata. Everybody top to bottom. Q-Tip called me. Primo. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get like, I, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like when you do something bad in school and it's like, you come back from suspension and everybody's like, what was you thinking? What was you thinking? <laughs> you know, that's yeah, that's, that's insane, insane fool. What the hell? You would think that he would learn his lesson, but his issues with Complex did not end there. Nope. During an appearance on Everyday nope. Struggle in 2017, and I didn't want to bring it up, but it's here. In academics, when he was asked about the perception that he is corny amongst his fans. The perception of you is that you might be corny. You thought that was me saying it to you. Let's, I'm just clarifying. Let's, 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 I'm, I'm just clarifying that I didn't I'm say that stop person. Song. Perception. So who, who are these people? Who are, who are they? I mean, I see my Maya and a girl, an egg, an I egg, an egg said that. You see people that think Donald Trump is doing a good job on Twitter, too. Please. I just don't understand where you're looking. If you're looking, you're looking now, where are you looking? Um, if you're looking for something bad, you're going to find it. You looking for hate on Wale, you gonna find it. You looking for hate on Kendrick, you gonna find it. Do you think I'm leaving hate? Notice that academics wasn't even the one calling him corny. And he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. See, I ain't gonna lie. Back then, I wasn't, you know, doing what I'm doing now. But I remember watching this live when it first aired. While they missed the whole point, we're not talking about personal opinions on you. We're talking about fans and how fans fans view you over the years, bro. Like you've been on for a while, like. You know what I'm saying? Your first hit was on your one that I'm not Wale, I'm Wally or whatever, whatever that bar was that off your hit record. That was like 2019. You know what I'm saying? That shit was on 2K, bro. You know what I'm saying? We just talking about throughout the years of how people view you. You had missed that whole. Even it went over your head. The interview or Wally tried to downplay academics to success by saying he was not the cool kid in school. Yeah, this he, academics school. wasn't though. We already know that. He not even from the country, bro. Not with the guys like me. Guys like me. What is that like? Guys like me. Guys we, play, we play football. Okay. We get girls. We have parties. We do fun stuff. Okay, you know okay. As a result, this was just another reason for the public to clown him and made him look even cornier in the process. Yeah, that was corny as well. brought up high school. Wally the type of guy that gets mad at his homeboy for telling him his girl's cheating on him. Wally the type of dude to hang around his old high school after graduating. Since oh, that's then, sick. Wally that is nasty work. Signed with Warner after his last album, Fuller and Two, charted even lower than his debut album from 2009. And after the year 2022, the DC rapper hasn't released any music other than a single. And because of the emotionally charged mismanagement of his career, it's likely that he will only have his most hardcore fans awaiting his return. As bad as Wale's journey was, it's nothing in comparison to Nicki Minaj. Oh, Nicki, Nicki, Nicki. Nicki. How y'all feel about Nicki? Um, I'm gonna be honest. I never was a fan of Nicki as a woman, as a person. Um, needless to say, I know why she's here. She's also the GOAT. Um, Nikki's the GOAT as far as women rap. She's definitely the one. She took it to levels we've never seen before, but 
I never was a fan of Nikki as a woman, as a person, or I just never understood her, um, her mentality. Um, and now that you see the rise of the women rappers, where you got Sexy Red, Glow Red, Lotto, shout out Lotto, Lotto from the crib. You got Lotto, you got Flo Millie, you got Meg, Meg and Pete, Free Tour, by the way. You got so many different women artists, Cardi B, shout out Cardi, you know, she QC love. It's like... I never understood why you had to hate on them so bad. I never understood why you hated on academics, Joe Button. Like, I never understood why you did what you did because you had money, power, and fame. You abused it, you manipulated it, and you tried to take people's jobs away. You tried to financially hurt people and manipulate people and lie to the public, similar to what Drake is doing now um, about the whole versus Kendrick shit. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Down and that's why your career is where it's at. Emerging into the rap game as you're still incredible, though. You know, you're still a goat. That don't change. Nicki Minaj's rise was unlike anything we've ever seen. That don't change. Sending hip hop to become a real pop star, Nicki has well and truly earned the title of Queen of Rap. And For sure. At the beginning of her career, she understood that mental toughness was essential to surviving in hip hop. Expedia members get member prices and rewards for future trips. Have to be like a beast. We have to be a beast. That's the only way they respect you. I came up under Wayne. And so? Wayne has his way of doing things. When Wayne walks on a set and say, Don't talk to me, have my music ready, get the out of my face and I'm gonna blow this in your face all day. It's cool. But every time I every time I put my foot down and stand up for myself, it's like We've heard about Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I'm glad you heard. Now, when I come to a photo shoot, let it be of quality. You know why? Because I put quality in what I do. I spend time and I spend every fiber of my being to give people quality. But as the world of female hip hop got more is that true? and challenges to her own ground started popping up, Nicki's defensiveness and protection of her brand spiraled out of control to the point that it just made her seem unhinged. Suddenly, people like... Why and it also make us see how insecure you truly are. Right? That's very insecure. Um, when you got other women that's being successful in your field, in your lane... And you just immediately hate on them. You just don't even give them a chance. You just hate on them. Um, that's lame. Thompson couldn't even air that's, an opinion that's on the output without getting an angry DM from Minaj and death threats from the bar. Rather than that's bold as hell. That's bold as hell. That's bold as hell. Nikki was not going at anyone so much that's as bold as hell. This was evident when she appeared on a podcast with Joe Budden, who was critical of her in the past and accused her of being on drugs. So you have to understand yeah. that there yeah. are people oh, yeah. that are going to believe you. Now they're thinking, oh, this psycho bitch just begin up on the platform lying. And people say, oh, you shouldn't care. Or you or are you in some in your feelings? Bitch, fuck you too if you think that I'm in my feelings or I'm whatever you the fuck you think. Because I am me, I'm a human being, and I and I have to defend myself because there's nobody else out there defending Onika Tanya Mirage. Yeah, but see, do you? That's what the barbs are for. Right? Your your community, your your hive. You now, future you got the future hive, Beyonce got the beehive, and you got all these fan bases. That's what your fans are for. When you're not getting the proper acclaim, when you're not getting the proper just do or flowers. That's what your fans are for. Your fans are going to fight for you. Future hasn't done an interview in, in fucking years. Right? Kendrick Dutt hasn't done an interview in years. Ye hasn't. Well, Ye just did it. He just put an album out, so he just did one. But Drake haven't done it. Uh, Drake hasn't done an interview in years. A real interview. I ain't talking about the Bobby chick. I'm talking about a real interview in years. That's what the fans are for. Dog, we love you. We cherish you. We love what you do, you making soundtracks to our lives. So of course, when people are talking crazy or it's a scandal going down, of course we're gonna ride for you, be there for you, and support you. But when you shitting on people and you not you mismanaging and having nasty attitudes, go back to that attitude. The fans will not fuck with you, rock with you. Nobody, will, so, nobody will rock with you. Basically, just became a place where she can go on to vent about whoever she thinks was dissing her. And over time, this led to a major victim complex. But those who dared She's a woman. to criticize her, they had to deal with the threats she set her audience on them. That is what the fuck you said. Nigga. You said, no. do you, aren't you fueling it by responding? Have you ever been bullied for, have you ever been bullied for 12 years straight? Nigga, uh, no, you did not get bullied for 12 years straight. Have you ever been, excuse me, since the day I got in the end Nigga, I'm gonna have my fans now start attacking you every fucking day. Yeah. By now, she 
she beats with everyone from Cardi B to Lotto and tries to keep every Shout other out Lotto. rapper in line. But while there's arguments to be made about who won those beats, Free tour. Nikki finally lost her mind and the ability for anyone who was in a bar to defend her, especially when it came to her beef with Megan Thee Stallion. After firing strays at Megan for a while, with bars like I Ain't Fucked With Horses Since Christopher Reeve, Megan finally clapped back at Nikki on the track Hits with a clever bar which referenced her husband's sex offender status. Suddenly, this sent Nikki into overdrive and proved once and for all that she lost any kind of composure she once had. Yeah, the result is uh, apparently no longer uh, it's it's just rap it's just rap now it's nothing but whining and crying yeah and now you're a victim because she fought back and it's like, oh, you went after her family. sadly it's just a classic case of somebody who is again a, a cry bully and wants to dish it out but can't take it when it's getting pushed back in their direction so now she's yeah. dropping tweets like oh megan's law for a free b you could hit megan raw unfortunately that perception hey i ain't gonna lie that's a hot line though that's not bad that's not that's a hot line i, I can't hate that i can't hate i can't take that away to rant about megan in a seriously deranged way you are not disrespect papa bear you dirty fucking ran through third ass bum ass bitch broke bitch you broke bitch Tell them the truth, bitch. What the? The IG thing was nuts. She sounds like a person you switch cars for on the subway. That incident led to the release of the diss track Bigfoot, where she made some serious allegations about the Houston rapper's character and demanded Megan to apologize or the revelations would keep coming. Initially, the song broke streaming records, but was soon trailed behind Megan's hiss in the race for the number one spot that week. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I saw a single soul call this song good. Where Nikki went wrong is this was not innovative, it was lazy, and really and truly, it was just trash. Well, it's it free tour. Like so that's how that is. Free tour. With a beat under it. Since then, all those alleged secrets that she was supposedly going to expose never even emerged. And now, people are wondering where she's supposed to go from here. After she did the worst thing possible in hip hop, which is let her emotions get the best of her. No matter what Nikki has to say next, it doesn't change the fact that she has lost. Yeah, you take it yourself out. Completely her fault. LOL. Are people still gonna love Nikki, but just make fun of her for this one instance? Or are we gonna accept that this is Nikki's fault from grave? For Nikki, her main problem that's damaged her credibility is that she's taking defending herself way too far. But she's not the only one guilty. Oh no! By the oh, name. shout out to my boy Russ. Russ. Absolutely incredible artist, rapper, producer, engineer, and entrepreneur. I love Russ. Am I a huge yeah, fan of Russ? No. Am I familiar with some of his work? Yeah. Some of it, not all of it. A self-sustainable rapper who has one of the most successful independent runs of all time. For sure. Russ is truly a self-made man in the game who raps, produces, and even engineers his own work. As a result, he landed on the Forbes list of richest rappers without Dope. ever really having Dope. a mainstream. Shout out Russ. Despite sure. that, Russ always seems to have a chip on his shoulder. And while that can be motivating for some, the problem is that he's a little too eager to stand on business. Or more accurately, have someone else do it for him as a result there have been several times where he's gotten people jumped for merely mentioning his name for example after adam 22 made fun of his anti-drug stance by editing his t-shirt and posting it on the no jumper account adam ended up finding himself on the receiving end of a beatdown in the nail salon really he infamously admitted in a video which now has over 1.5 million views damn oh my god can i just get my fucking nails done i'll turn around and in the goddamn head. Damn. Uh, didn't see the guy that well, but punched me in the head one time, and then I believe I got hit again, sort of on the top of the head. But then he's on Academics live stream talking about it, and Russ just pops in there and says, this motherfucker Adam 22 got touched too. Later, Russ Damn. tried to justify the whole thing, and it seemed like he was out to prove that he shouldn't be viewed as some non-threatening rapper. If you're talking shit about another grown ass man, you're using your platform. Like I said, you're mobilizing your army, you're using your platform to negatively throw stones at my castle. If you get confronted about it, whether it be me or anyone else, there should be zero surprise in your head. If I agree with that. I agree with that. That 
oh my god wait there's ramifications from my actions i agree with that and the problem is you think it, you judge the book by its cover because you would not be talking like that to 21 savage or to gucci clearly this idea that he's soft is a major issue for rugs because soon after adam was jumped another man who took shots at him over his anti-drug campaign smoke mm. got beat up at a music festival in germany in a video i cannot show you on youtube smoke perp can be seen getting the yeah, beats yeah, put yeah. on him yeah, got the beat sleeves off him you know that he was backstage at the splash festival in 2018 without hesitation russ was back to brag about it even if he didn't really do anything those two kids those kids those are clowns bro did you see him at any festival did you yeah we we've caught we caught one of them at a festival that motherfucker knows what time it is bro which one still try as he might to act tough russ was still seen as a punk by the hip-hop community holy fuck yeah but see what what makes you okay 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 what what makes you as a punk though, Russ, it's because you're not in the fields doing it. You know what I'm saying? You have your team or your your entourage or your guys or whoever doing said acts. You're not doing the acts. That's what make you a punk. That or that's what make people perceive you as a punk. Me personally, that's just some bullshit. Like you won't see a boss lay a finger. Now you you may see a boss sometimes get dirty, the hands dirty. But that's if he really got disdain for you or he hates you or, you know. But people don't rob with you because they just don't rob with you, bro. That's not your fault because you're the guy, bro. Like, I love you. Like, I love everything you stand for. Uh, you harsh. You harsh, but you're real and blunt. And I love that. Give it to me raw. Give it to me real. No Diddy. And just, I want you to be pure as possible. Like, you cold. But people just don't rock with you, bro. So no matter what you do. They're just going to go against it because it's right message, wrong messenger. That's all it is. That's all it is, bro. Finally close to a W. That's Still all it is. L for 5X security jumping a junkie. He just stood on the sidelines. A big L. That's what I'm Instead saying. taking on anyone who he thought had disrespected him. Walked at 4,000 wasn't even dissing Russ. And he still ended up on the receiving end of a beating as well. Which is, of course, in another video I cannot show you on YouTube. Yeah, had to catch him down bad. Walked that jumped on live to try and explain what went down. Guys, as you say, hey, let's talk about this song, bro. I said, cool, I'm on the phone with my brother. I turned around. And you snake me, get ran in your trailer, and had your security try to beat me up. Your security couldn't get me, so your partners tried to chase me, and then they got beat up by the fans. Although Russ claimed that the Oakland rapper got what he wanted in an interview with Nick Cannon. Leave me alone, I'll leave y'all alone. Right. You don't see me just pulling up on random people. But that's real. Hey, keep hey, my that, name out of your mouth. That's what I'm saying. I got to come talk. Well, that said that he basically gave Russ a compliment for his hustle, and it was the rapper's notoriously sensitive nature that caused the issue. I got a song called Proud of Process. Where I say you I go like right, Russ. but we don't care. I call that doing Russ. Damn. And Russ didn't like that. What so. You, oh. But I mean, to this What day, happened to go up that? I could openly say I never had no problem with the nigga. I was just talking about his, sta his stance in the game is an interesting case study for real. Definitely. Because people like Russ live and can uh, live off of and prosper in hip hop. Right. Right? Like look at his For sure, for sure, for sure. Right. But also be completely removed from the culture. Mm -hmm. That's what the bar was about. Despite the fact I agree one thousand percent though, I ain't gonna lie. In a way that hip hop would ordinarily respect. The fact that he seemed to get his goons to do most of the work had the opposite effect. As a result, yeah, man, that is the bogus. decision has seriously limited his appeal as the cloud of that kind of behavior has hung over him ever since. So while he's still making a bag, it would be so much bigger if so much of hip hop's listenership hadn't written him off after Yeah, this I agree one hundred percent. Now Absolutely incredible video, different, very, very different perspectives, man. But dope video, shout out Louisa, man. Original link of the video being the first link in the description. But y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Y'all weigh in on Rush, y'all weigh in on Nikki, y'all weigh in on some of these case studies, and y'all let me know what y'all think. But the moral of the story, guys, is emotional intelligence. You have to have it in life, not just business, not just friendships, not just um whatever field or careers you're pursuing you gotta have emotional intelligence like off top so you know who it is cam 1111 make sure you like share subscribe if you're new i'm signing out y'all love